Good. Um, first of all, thanks for um, thanks for being here. Uh, it feels really good to to be back in Oslo for for Blockchain Day. Uh, I was here last year uh, as a spectator, uh, sort of listening in on all the talks, and that was before we we had made our entry in, into the world of crypto and blockchain. So it feels good to be back this year as a as a participant and tell you more about uh, about Opera and. Why we, uh, what we've been doing uh, with regards to crypto and blockchain. So today I want to focus on, you know, what we see the role of browsers in this in these new networks uh, and these new uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, and we think they they have a very central role for for adoption and usage of these crypto uh, of these currencies. Uh, you're probably familiar with Opera. It's it's a it's a local name. Uh, we've been around for for some time, and I've been making browsers for um, for a long time. And we we're one of the original kind of internet companies. Uh, our HQ is still in Oslo, and we have engineering offices in in Sweden, Poland, and China. Uh, I'm based in in Sweden, and I'm leading the the product team that is building this uh, this product, um, which is a crypto wallet inside the browser. Uh, we have about 500 employees, and uh, we have a massive user base uh, in the world of apps, but also especially in the world of crypto. Uh, we have over 270 million monthly active users. Um, and in the world of crypto, that is, you know, by orders of magnitude, uh, bigger than anything else. Um, so the, the journey... Uh, our journey into crypto is really started from the the acknowledgement that the web is evolving, and Opera has always been, um, you know, played the role of an innovator in browsers and adapting to new standards and defining new standards. And we've we've seen this emergence of um, of these new crypto networks, of these open blockchains, um, and we started thinking: does the web, does the browser have a role in this? Uh, and when we started seeing, you know, applications being built on top of these platforms, uh, sort of running code in this distributed environment, um, executing payments, now we really saw that, okay, there's an opportunity here for, for the browser to do more for the user, to, to facilitate access to these new applications. Um, but as you may know, applications, there's always uh, a back end and a front end, right? There's stuff that happens in the background, there's stuff you see. Um, and from our point of view, right, the, the user experience is really, um, is really important. So we, we really believe that you know, these, these new applications that are being built using these, these public open blockchains, the user facing layer will be web. Uh, first of all, because the web is permissionless, just as the the blockchain itself, right? Anyone can publish a website. Uh, they don't need, let's say, an app store approval to, to start distribution of their app. They can just release it and have it accessible. So we think that the innovation um, will start first on the web for these new applications, and that the browser is really the, the entry point or the gateway to these new applications. And this new web that we call, like to call Web3, it's kind of an umbrella term. But in essence, what it means is that it's a web where you know, the user has more control uh, because of their, you know, there's a concept of a cryptographic keys that the user can, can own their data, can perform payments, can, um, can be more, a bit more independent on the web and not rely so much on central entities that have grown to be uh, giants in the Web2 world. Um, but, you know, if you've tried uh, any of these uh, cryptocurrencies or um, decentralized applications, you'll, you'll have been uh, <laughs> very quickly realized that using this is extremely hard. Um, you know, typically what you need to interact with these new blockchains is, is some kind of wallet, some kind of key management software that allows you to sign transactions or sign messages and interact with this, this public network. And typically the UI is, is, is very bad and um, makes this very unfriendly to use. Um, and we, 
we've also started seeing things like browser extensions like MetaMask that you know, are trying to, to add wallet capability to existing browsers through an extension mechanism also grow in importance in the last year. But again, <clears throat> experience is really hard for a user. There's lots of steps. They don't really understand what this thing is, and there's so much friction that you know, it basically kills any potential for uh, any kind of mainstream usage. So in the past year, we've seen a few of these experiments of people that have built solid wallets that you know, realize that, OK, the wallet is one thing, the key management is one thing, but then it, it's decoupled from the applications that actually want to use this, this cryptocurrency or this, these networks. Uh, so they've started trying to build browsers on top of wallets. And we know that you know, building a browser is hard. Um, even though you base it on open source products and the rendering engines, uh, it still takes a tremendous amount of effort to make something that people will want to use. So what you end up with is, is a good wallet with a bad browser that is too basic to, to have a good experience. Um, so it, it, we found it's a, it's a bit sad that you know, these next generation Web3 applications end up you know, having this bad experience. So we want to reach the same kind of combo of a wallet and a browser, but we start from the browser end. So we start from a browser with, that has millions of users that people love, um, and that has all the features that, that you'd expect and then try to build a wallet on top to enable this, these new Web3 applications to, to work. So uh, um, you know, typical wallet app is disconnected from, from other apps or the browser, so you, you end up having to interact with it by copy-pasting long strings of numbers or scanning QR codes. And there's really a, a big disconnect between the applications and the wallet. Whereas in the Opera case, we, we have this, the same browser you use every day, it now has this extra capability to, to use these applications. So we're bridging the gap, really, between the, the wallet and the applications and removing like, a lot of the friction that exists in even trying to, to use these technologies. Um, and we want to be... like the the one browser for the whole web. So the users don't even have to ask themselves, oh, is this special new Web3 app or crypto? It just works, right? You go to Facebook, you go to Google, you go to uh, uh, Dogens Nieter, and then you have these new types of applications as well on the side. And we do all of this in a, in a familiar environment. Right? Everyone uses a browser. So we think that's really a good starting point. Um, to, to make this a more friendly, um, a more friendly space. Um, so we've started to, oh, yeah, and so we're building this capability now in, in all of our products, and I'm going to show you a bit what it looks like shortly. Just quickly, like from a high-level schematic, right? You have the browser, um, you have the application that lives on this this public network. And the browser is in the middle, talking to the blockchain, signing transactions, retrieving data, uh, verifying signatures, and that sort of thing, uh, and storing the keys uh, on the phone. So that's a super important part here, is that what, we, what we've built is a, a so-called user-controlled wallet, a non-custodial wallet. So the, in, this, uh, in this product, the user is really in control of their keys, and uh, can independently sign things, um, you know, not dependent on Opera. And uh, when you think about it, uh, you know, we, we, in this Web3 world where you have payments built in, you have identity, um, now the browser is starting to look like a super app. And if you're familiar with the term super app, it's the, the kind of adjective, uh, adjective we use for uh, WeChat, for example, this mega app uh, from China that does everything, basically. Um, in our Western context, perhaps now we, this, this kind of app is less familiar. We're used to using different apps. But when you have all these bits together in one app, it's really starting to look like a super app. This is a bit what it looks like. Um, 
So I'm going to do a short demo if I have time. Um, so super easy onboarding. If you choose to enable it from the menu, you say open wallet and you're in it. There's not $25 when you open it, always, but uh, <laughs> you can try. Um, and we're, yeah, we really see our goal, our role here as removing friction. So for example, now we've even added possibility to top up your wallet um, in Norway, uh, Denmark, and Sweden with a bank idea. So that's super quick. Um, and if you happen to just um, go to a site that uses these new Web3 APIs or talks to the blockchain, um, you know, we don't throw you off. We just say, okay, this, this site, uh, you know, needs a wallet for a full experience. You click that and you're back to the, the application um, with a wallet. Uh, whereas before that, you had to send a user somewhere getting an extension. Um, and yeah, it's, it was very complicated. So what does it mean? What does it give us to, to have this browser wallet combo? Um, it means that now we can transfer value um, between users, like so users of the same browser or different wallets can, can send value to each other. But more importantly, you now have applications and services that can receive uh, money from the user one click away. So think of it like a global borderless uh, Apple Pay with a single currency. Uh, allows things like identity so you can prove who you are without you know, using like Google login or Facebook login, again, um, giving you your more control. And you can also prove that you own certain things. Um, and I'm gonna show you some examples. So these are a bunch of logos. You're, you're probably not familiar with most of them, but these are all applications that are live today that use this technology and that works super well in Opera. Um, I'll mention them quickly and then I'll um, just do a quick demo. So the value transfer part, um, really what some people call the internet of money, uh, you know, things like Unlock is a kind of a crypto paywall solution for publishers. You know, monetizing, monetizing content on the internet is, is extremely hard and because there's no native kind of internet payment system, but now there is. Um, and publishers can integrate with it. Uh, you get things like, uh, you know, decentralized uh, Twitter on PPF. You have bounties networks that allow you to earn crypto, all allowing you to log in um, with your wallet. Uh, I'm running out of time, right? Yeah. It's a, I'll just do a quick demo so you feel like, okay, th this is actually real and it's not just slides. Um, so I'm going to... Exit that. So, on the right is my phone. Um, so I told you you were um, integrating this capability across all our products. That includes the desktop side of things. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. Um, so I have my so I have the phone on the right and desktop on the left. I just want to uh, use my wallet uh, on my desktop. I just go connect to computer, scan it, and now my wallet is paired. So now I have exactly the same wallet on my phone and um, on desktop. And now I c if I go to any site that, that um, uses crypto, for example, this blog um, about crypto, I like this site, I want to help um, you know, the, the, the publisher and the, the writer behind this site. I can go down here and click tip. So I'm on desktop, I just like this content, click tip. You see what happens on, the, on my mobile, it says, so the, 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 the important part here is that you know, you have this, this uh, the most secure computing device you have is your phone. So the, your, 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 uh, your keys are never on desktop. We tell you, do you want to confirm this? I have my fingerprint payment. Boom. So now I've just teleported cash 
directly from my wallet to this publisher, this guy that's writing this article. Um, so you can think of a system where it's more institutionalized, where you have like a, a newspaper that has a paywall solution that integrates this. You don't have to create an account. You don't have to put your credit card in. You don't have to subscribe to anything. It's just literally teleporting cash on the internet, P2P. Um, I'm running out of time, but um, I can show more. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I'll just. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I can continue the demo. I have more things. <laughs> okay, I'll just. Uh, um, so I told you about the. So that was the, the kind of the value transfer um, case. Um, I can go to. To a site that, that uses this, uh, this type of login system. Um, can click sign in on top. So instead of having a, a username password, I can just sign it with my wallet. And now I'm logged in. Uh, another cool app that just launched, it's called NZIP. So this is actually pretty cool. Um, let's see, NZIP. Allows you to, to sell a file, P2P, directly. So let's say I'm on this site. Um, I take a photo of here, right? And I want to sell this file to someone. Click next. Just set the price. Let's say one dot zero one ETH. Ah, oh, that's too much. It's not that good of a picture. It encrypts the file. It creates this unique link that I can send to someone. Um, so I can go in my other opera here on the buyer side. I just verify my, my wallet. And it says, purchase this file for one, uh, one, 0 0.111 ETH. I click that. Again, the payment, 111 ETH, it's one krona, it's, it's worth one krona. I sign. And now, shortly, I'll get access to this file, and the, the, the content creator will get the payment directly in their wallet. There's no bank, uh, no file hosting, no web server. It's just direct content creation and monetization. Um, so we, we really believe that you know, by removing this friction, we enable a whole new kind of, of applications and, and business model to emerge um, on the web. And um, you know, I really believe that other browsers will follow. Um, and in the long term, operating systems will follow. So that you know, this kind of key management uh, capability will be embedded at the system level. And um, applications like browsers will integrate with that. Um, Yeah, um, thanks for listening and thanks for the extra time. Uh.